Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Dark Souls walkthrough part 28. In the last episode we took out the uh, centipede demon, in this episode we pretty much explore the entire entirety of Lost Isaac. Uh, yeah, so make sure you, you throw on that that um, charred ring that you got from the uh, centipede demon or else that lava will kill you rather quickly. So make sure to, throw, make sure to throw, that on, throw that on and keep it on until you get through this entire little lake of fire area thingy. Sorry if I can't talk, uh, something happened earlier so I'm kind of jumpy I guess but anyways uh, this is the typically the path I take to get to the next area it's not like I'm afraid of walking in the lava it's just there's a whole bunch of these dinosaur guys that are kind of a pain to kill so I just run around them. Uh, you can see one right there and there there's a whole bunch of them uh, I'm not sure if they respawn or not because I've never actually gone over and killed them so uh, just just I don't know stay away from them so they have a pretty close uh, aggro range so as long as you just follow this path and don't get too close to them you should be fine so you do have to run over this lava to get to this spot over here. Um, up ahead, inside these little building type things up here, one contains a soul of a great hero, which is 20,000 souls, and one has a bonfire. So that's a pretty pretty convenient bonfire to the next boss, if you think it's closer. And then the other bonfire, which I typically use, but uh, I, I, sometimes I don't remember that this isn't a mimic, so I attacked it new ways. And there's the soul of the great hero, which is 20,000 souls to your soul counter if you want those to level up or buy things or whatever. At this point, you know what they do, so yeah. Uh, running around, some of these statues right here, they come to life. I thought that one did, but apparently it doesn't. And see, you can see more of the dinosaur things, fire dinosaur things that, that I don't like very much. So, uh, just stay away from them. Now, if you run up the log that I am running up, I believe there is an item up here. Uh, I believe it's humanity or something along those lines, but if you just want to pick that up, I mean, sure. Uh, you have you have to drop down and take a little fall damage if you do come up here, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because there's a bonfire right inside this building. Uh, yeah, I can never really remember which side it's on, so I think it was this one. So bonfire, you can rest up, level up, repair your items and stuff. It, it may seem fairly close to the previous one right after the centipede demon. But this one's very convenient to getting to the bed of chaos, which is the next boss, which will probably be in the next episode. So, yeah, I, I recommend either using either using this bonfire to get to him, or uh, the one that you got to right after the demon fire sandwich, because there's actually a checkpoint that I unlock, I unlock to him, get to the, uh, the bed of chaos quickly from there. So that's kind of nifty. At this point, you can take off your orange tarred ring. You are done with it at the moment. However, if you do die and go back to that previous bonfire. Make sure to equip it again because I've had this. I've had instances instances where I've taken off the ring and then forgot to put it back on, just run in the lava and lost all my souls because I died again. So don't don't be a klutz like me sometimes. That that kind of sucks. So there's no lava in between you and the next boss if you're careful. So uh, over here there are a ton of these fire statue things. Uh, it's pretty obvious to tell a real one from a fake one. I obviously can't tell that difference. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the real ones are a little bit lighter. As you can see right there, you can see the comparison. The real ones are lighter and the stone ones are darker, so that's a good way to tell. Also, the real ones will try to kill you and the dark ones will not. So that's also something, something that's kind of obvious. So, uh, two, I'm two-handing my weapon to the fullest effect. These guys are pretty... Are, they're, they're typically pretty resistant to physical damage, but I do have my battle axe to plus 15, I think, so... I do recommend having a really powerful weapon. Especially for the centipede demon, because he can be a pretty challenging boss, so... Uh, the bed of chaos... Uh, isn't challenging for reasons why other bosses are, but we'll get to that in the next episode, so don't, don't you worry. Uh, these guys can also be annoying. If you, if you don't have any poise, sometimes they can f use fire and stagger you, and if there's a whole bunch on you, uh, it could be like a quick and swift death, so you want to be careful about it. So. Yeah, to be careful, because there's a whole ton of, a ton of these guys over here. So, yeah. Alright, the reason I've been kind of jumpy and stuff, I guess, it's because I, I beat the hardest song Guitar Hero a few minutes ago, so I was really excited about that. And that's that's my life. That's my nerd time of the day. So, all right, we just killed all those all those fire breathing guys. Run around here and pick up a large soul of a brave warrior, which is 8,000 souls. Um, and yeah, so you want to run up these stairs right here. All right, that thing up there is much less is much more intimidating than it actually is. Basically, you just lock onto it and walk around it. And it'll do some sort of attack, just two-handed weapon, and just go at him. And then you'll kill him in a few hits. It's not really that challenging. The move he does with the spraying the gas stuff that, that you saw him do a second ago, if you have your shield out and try to block that, 
I believe that does direct durability damage to your shield. And by that, I mean, like, suppose your shield has 300 durability, and it does that move. It'll, like, bring your durability down super low after that. This is one of the Daughters of Chaos. Uh, she is the o one of the only ones you have to fight, with the exception of Kellogg, who we killed earlier as a boss. This one is, this is the sister that's not deformed, the only one you can kill that's not deformed, that's evil and everything. So there's the Isolith Catalyst for you, if you like Isolith Catalysts. I guess. Um, here's another one of these really intimidating guys who really aren't hard at all. Let's see, and then there's there's a missed move again, so just be wary of that. Uh, yeah, but he only takes a few hits. I also can never remember if this is a mimic. I guess it's not. You can also tell by the chain. Uh, yeah, so I explained that if the chain is curled behind the chest, then it's not a mimic, and if it's sticking forward, then it is a mimic. However, it's hard to tell on these tiles, so yeah. Also, right here to my right, that is where the next boss is. However, there is so much more we need to do in Lost Isleth. We will come back there in the next episode. So if you want to see that boss fight, it'll be up shortly. Uh, you, uh, you can run around this way to get another item that I've never successfully got before. But um, if you can, you can try you all you want. I mean, I'm, I'm not really going to stop you. I don't see how I could. But anyway, so here's this guy. You can kill this guy. This guy's a bunch of a problem. This isn't the item I'm talking about. Soul of a Hero. 10,000 souls. That's pretty good. But around here is the item that I could never manage to get a hold of. After you kill this guy, you will notice that uh, right there, that item. If you try to walk off the edge, then you'll slide over it like that. But I can, I, I just could never figure that out. But if you have a way, just let me know in the comments below or send me a personal message or something. But I've never figured out what it was, so I don't know. It's just a mystery to me. So if you can get to that, kudos to you. So, anyways, so there's one more path that we need to go to, and I guess I cut my foot on a root, but anyways. One more, one more path that we need to explore, which is the biggest, the biggest route, which will take the majority of the time in the video, is this way. There are a ton of these fire guys, so you want to be careful of that. Fortunately, they are pretty spread out throughout this area, so you can, only take, you can take them out one or two at a time, if you're, even if you're a bit slow, so that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, so to my left, it's, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but to my left, there is a fake item that you can get. It's actually a trap that if you go up to it, the ground plate breaks below you, and I show that too. Uh, but that's something you want to be careful of. The first time I came through here, I had no idea what the bonfire was, and I was freaking out because I didn't want to die. Uh, I made sure, also made sure to kill kill all these guys around here because they are, don't want them to sneak up on me. So. Anyways. I don't know which way I went next. Did I get the shortcut or... Okay, I went this way. So there's the fake item, right? So you run forward, and then the ground plate breaks below you. So you do take a little fall damage. You want to be careful of that. And then you be you are, you are be in this area. Yes, perfect grammar, Drew. Perfect. Anyway, so there's that guy up there. He does not typically... I've managed to get him down here once, but he typically just kind of looks at you from up there and just kind of like, sup? But he doesn't really do anything, so... You can just, you can just not really worry about him. But... Uh, this is one of those moments where you really want the rusted iron ring. Uh, it's one of the it's a the probably the best method of getting out of here uh, because you have to well you don't have to but the best plan of attack is to kill all those guys again they're they 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 always look intimidating to me I don't know why but anyways so there's a specific way to killing them but I will show you I'll show you my way without really much fighting at all so. With the rusted iron ring, you can run through this goop down here no problem. But if you don't have it, you kind of walk slowly and stuff, and it kind of sucks. But and it's also the poisonous swamp from Blight Town, so yeah, there's also that. You don't want them to break your break your stuff. And I totally forgot about the other the the, the strategy uh, of of what I typically do. So you notice that hole right there. Basically, you just run around the hole, and and they just they just walk right in it. They just walk right in the hole. So that's that's pretty much it. That is the method. Of killing these guys down here easily. Just just watching them, watching them die. Waving them goodbye. And then let out a sigh. Poetry by Drew. Anyways, um, there was one more item down here that you might want, and that's not where I was going, but I believe this is up to behind the tentacle guy. And I was wrong, never mind. But there's one more item down low. Down low, um, in this area down here. It is the red titanite slab the red titanite slab is a item is an item is a item perfect grammar i just can't talk today i'm sorry but it's a special item that upgrades your weapons to plus 10 for the fire fire element i believe it's right here to the right there it is 
Um, so, there is a skeleton um, blacksmith down in the catacombs that I will probably show if I can remember him. Um, I'll probably show him. His name is Ivamos. And he upgrades weapons to fire and chaos fire and stuff like that if you have those embers. Well, what the red titanite slab does is it does the same thing that the normal titanite slab does, except it does it for fire weapons. So, when a titanite slab gets a weapon from plus 14 to plus 15, a fire titanite slab gets a weapon from plus 9 fire to plus 10 fire. So that's that's something that, that yeah, if you want to have fire weapons, be my guest. But some guys are weak and some guys are strong to fire, so, yeah. Just keep that in mind. That's why I typically go with normal weapons. And somehow he fell off. See, it's you're always trying to get him when you're down there, but when he when he jumps off, it just doesn't work. But if you just do a plunging attack, I guess I got I just one shot at him, so it wasn't too hard. And for the next few minutes, I did have a bit of trouble finding my way out of here. It's always a bit confusing at first, but I did I did find my way out. Don't don't worry, I'm I'm not not that clueless. Not that clueless. Just trying to help those who are afflicted with this game. Uh, I'm really excited about Dark Souls 2 as well. I'm definitely going to do a playthrough of that, not a walkthrough. A playthrough, make it more entertaining and stuff, yeah. So, really excited about that game. Saw the gameplay. Looks a lot like Demon Souls, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm ready to get into it. Not saying Demon Souls is worse than Dark Souls. I just personally prefer Dark Souls to Demon Souls, but, you know, so on and so forth. And we will press on. Up ahead, you see another one of the Titanite demons. We killed one at the at one of the first blacksmiths. I believe it's the second one at uh, Andre, and we uh, we saw one in Anor Orlando. I don't think we killed him. This one, you, you really want to be aware of, primarily because he is actually a bit faster and does more damage than the other ones. Like he will one or two shot you if you're not careful. He's much faster to fight. I mean, he's much faster. Like he'll he'll do his moves and stuff faster than the other ones. Um, I know there's one, oh yeah, and also, the bridge you fight him on is just very narrow, it's really hard to keep track of everything, so, that's something you wanna, wanna be aware of, so I just run past him, typically. There's also a crystal lizard up here, and there's also another character, if you've kept up with his story, and that is Knight Solaire. I was informed by some, not necessarily trusty, uh, trusty sources, but reliable, that's the word, not necessarily reliable sources, that you could actually save Solaire if you killed these things. I tested it out, and I didn't get it to work, but I mean, if, if there is a way to do it, let me know, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Also, this is the checkpoint I was talking about a little earlier in the video. This, this, uh, door right there, if you are, like, plus two in the chaos coming down then you can actually, uh, I believe that's what it is, you can actually go through that um, checkpoint from the other side and go straight from the Demon Fire Sage to uh, the Bed of Chaos with, uh, I think it's Skip the Sin of your Demon, so. That's what I've been informed by some fairly reliable sources, so. Right here I got the Sunlight Maggot, you definitely want to pick that up for the Catacombs. That's why I always come into the Demon Ruins before I go to the Catacombs, because uh, I mean, not the demon, the, the uh, Lost Isleth and Demon Ruins and stuff, because this is definitely my favorite place to go, and because you get that one specific item. Uh, basically, what it does is when you put it on your face, and then, it, you know, it casts light everywhere. So, uh, in the catacombs, it gets really dark, and it's really hard to see. So, you can either use a Skull Lantern, which takes up your, your shield spot, so you have no defense, or you can just wear the Sunlight Magnet, which takes up your helmet spot, so. That's why I love the Sunlight Magnet, so. And so, I, I just couldn't get it to work, so I just thought, you know what, forget it, I'm just gonna kill, I'm just gonna kill Knight Solaire. I really wanted to keep him alive, he's such a cool guy, but I, I just could not manage to figure out how on earth to make, make, make it work, so. I was trying to parry him, and I succeeded. You do get his armor after you kill him. Um, he's, uh, yeah, kind of tricky, I guess, but I mean, not, he's just like the majority of other NPCs in this game, so. But you do get his armor, and he was, he was kind of possessed, he was kind of driven mad to, for his desire to find his son. But, I was also informed that if you put the Sunlight Maggot on while fighting him, he will, like, not get mad at you or something, or he'll, like, calm down, but I'm, I'm not sure, so. If you, if you know, just let me know in the comments below, but. I just have no clue how to do it, so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the majority of content in this part. If you notice, right back here, we are back in the Demon Ruins, that's where the Taurus Demon was, and this is where we fought the Demon Fire Sage. 
So this is back to back to square one a little bit, but uh, I like to use the route from this bonfire up ahead to the bed of chaos because it's it's uh, less enemies to deal with, and I I just feel like it's faster to get to the bed of chaos this way. Uh, because I can almost guarantee you, you will die at least a few times on the bed of chaos. Because the bed of chaos is kind of a pain. So I'll explain that in the next part. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to keep up with my videos. And I will see y'all next time where we take out the bed of chaos.